Welcome to epiphany number 35. Your drive and motivation comes from four things. Uh, one of the oftentimes criticized elements of personal performance and production is this motivation. And I'm one of the first ones to, to criticize it. Because I do think that many sales organizations and gurus overemphasize motivation. You do have to know what you're doing. You have to be competent. You can't be a goof. Oftentimes, it is just basically a mechanical step-by-step. -step. At the same time, you can't discard it. Uh, really, motivation and, and determination and inspiration is really like what I, what I call step zero. Step one is in our business is prospecting. Right, is that's the actual mechanical work you have to do. But step zero is you have to have the right mindset, the right psychology. So let's get down to it. Four things. The first one is love. And I got this from Nick Murray. I was already in the business probably probably 20 years before I really heard this at least expressed the way he said it. And this was at a seminar, a small seminar I was at. It's about 100 people, uh, top advisors in the country. And he brought this up and he was very passionate about it. He said, look, I never understood why advisors are not motivated. He says, I, I was very easily motivated is it was love. Is I, every morning before I went to work, I would think of the people that I love and the people that love me, and that would motivate me to work. And when I got home from work, I would reflect back on what I did and didn't do that day. And in contrast, again, in light of the people I love and the people that love me. So I'm sure we all have people in various degrees, in various ways, and keep that on the forefront of your mind. Number two is helping others. And I think sometimes this is overstated and sometimes it's not stated enough. I, I really truly believe that no one does this business purely and stays in the business long term only for helping other people for the crusade. But it can keep you in the business. And it and even if you're in a different business, to be honest, most most businesses most legitimate businesses do provide some value to their end customer in exchange for currency. And of course, in our business, it's tremendous. Nick Murray uh, famously says that, that what we do is more important than even what doctors do because it has a long-term uh, legacy type of impact on, our, on, on people's families. So thinking about helping other people, making an impact on, on the individual client. So that's another thing too. It's not just sometimes just thinking of helping people like they're this mass thing. Um, as Ayn Rand says, there's no such thing as, as, as people or culture or, you know, again, for the people. Everyone's an individual, right? And so that's helped me in the regard of, of this particular uh, topic is that, yes, I want to help people, but I've got to translate that phrase, that expression into an actual person. Uh, or, or if I don't have one, even a fictitious, but, but an, an, actual, an actual family. And so when I'm prospecting, sometimes I would think, you know, I, I'm getting rejections, I'm getting objections, I'm getting resistance. But I know in my mind that if, they, if I can just get the appointment and get them to talk to me, I will actually make a positive impact on their life, both short term, medium term and long term. So thinking about helping other people can keep you in the business uh, long term. That, that's the second motivation. Number three is being somebody. Now, being somebody, it's often said that you know, pride is the emotional reward for doing a good job. And of course, I mean pride, pride in a good way, not, not in a bastardized, exaggerated white way where you're prideful, but the word pride is, it is the emotional, it's the emotional reaction or the resonance of knowing you've done a job well done. And so the being somebody can come in a lot of forms. And pride is one of them, and, and that's kind of more of an internal thing, is, is you know you did a good job, you either put a great plan for someone, you got them involved, maybe it took some work, but it also comes in, in, in your culture in, uh, of your company. I mean, in, in your group, in your organization, your network of friends and, and uh, of coworkers and accomplishing something. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, maybe it's winning a contest, it's, it's uh, achieving a promotion, it's breaking a record, it's, or, or you breaking your own record. There's, there's a multitude of ways you can do that. But I want you to be careful not to discount that. I can tell you one of the biggest challenges I've seen in, in, in 25 years in management, 30 years in the business, in, in advisors and reps from all different walks of life, different companies, is that very few people will openly admit, some do, but very few do, that, that they're motivated by being somebody. I, 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 don't, I just recently even had someone, I don't need recognition, I don't care what other people think, and uh, it doesn't matter to me, I'm doing this for me and my family. And it's great, that, that, that's part of, of the four goals we're talking about. But I also call BS on that. I think everybody wants to be somebody. Everybody does to some degree 
care what other people think about them. If you didn't, you wouldn't wear clothes that match. You wouldn't wear cologne or perfume. You wouldn't wear deodorant. You, you wouldn't care about your body odor, odor. You wouldn't worry about your hair. In fact, you wouldn't even talk uh, uh, nice to people, really. Uh, you may not talk rude, but you wouldn't be polite because you don't care what they think. So if you don't care what they think, it doesn't matter if you wear socks with sandals. It doesn't matter if you wear shorts and a suit, right? But you don't do those things because you do, to some degree, care what other people think. You do care what your peers think of you, right? It does matter. Um, and the key, like everything else in life, is, is in moderation, is you can't let it, let it drive you and, and, and work you insane and to, to, to the abstinence of everything else. But at the same time, don't, don't discard it is the best way I can say. Well, one of my trainers in a previous, previous company who's a million dollar earner said, you have to be willing to be in the hot seat. You have to allow yourself to be in the hot seat, meaning like if there's a contest or, or uh, uh, something to go for and everybody in the group's going for, but it's kind of voluntary maybe, um, just like having an accountability program, you have to be willing to put yourself in the hot seat and then take the good, which is the, the, the being somebody, the pride, the recognition, the kudos, the accolades, and also take in the negative. But don't discard the ability of wanting to be somebody, or I should say the desire to be somebody as one of the strongest motivations you can have. And you, only you can cultivate that. You have to accept it and not just blow it off. And finally, number four is personal goals. And personal goals, the, the, the previous three above in a, are a form of personal goals. But I mean, discarding the other three or, or not including them, this is going to be usually things like Maybe it's just building a business, but that kind of goes with, with being somebody. But it's usually more, usually more like something tangible or something fun that's intangible. So it might be like a new car, a new house, a new, a new electronic device. Maybe it's a PlayStation or something. I don't know. Or, or, or it's you want to you get a, a man cave or a woman cave or at your house. You want to add a jacuzzi. Or it could be intangible, like perhaps you want to take a, a vacation with your family more often, maybe a three-day weekend every eight weeks, or you want to get cleaners that come in every week so that your spouse or you can stop having to clean and do dishes and do laundry. I mean, you can make up your own, but you get the idea. So this is more kind of fun stuff. But in some way, again, I have the, sometimes people have the same problem with this one as the previous one where Maybe not as badly, but they sometimes, ah, the, the, the nice cars are not important, the nice houses are not important. And maybe those exact two specific things aren't. But there's got to be, you're living in a Western capitalistic world. There's got to be some stuff that you'd like to do that requires currency, right? And you've got to figure out what those are. Maybe it's even taking up a hobby that costs money, learning something, going to school or hiring a personal tutor. Or maybe it is, it's something you're already doing, but you could do it better or easier or more effectively if you had more cash flow to do it. The, the thing is, you've got to figure out what that is, and then you've got to put a game plan. So let's get to the, to the kind of second half of, of number four personal goals, which is really all of them, is a game plan. You have to have a game plan. And I'm going to just kind of get, read something to you real quick and then give you an idea and, and then we'll be done. So this is a famous Yale University. You've probably all heard this before if you study anything about goal setting. Back in 1953, uh, Yale University uh, studied people for 20 years. So they took the graduating class and studied them for 20 years for the ones that you know, were still alive. And what they figured out in the beginning when the people first graduated is 3% of the class, the graduating class, people that made it through, had a comprehensive goal set and set a program with written goals and rich, written action steps. 10% carried out a modest, incomplete program. And I was basically just kind of having vague goals, but then didn't have a real step-by-step -step game plan. And 87%, the majority, had no program at all, which is what most people are. If you sit down, talk to them, have a cigar, have a scotch, they'll probably tell you some things they want to do. It's not that they have never thought about what they do if they won the lottery, but they don't actually put a plan together. They don't break it down. Well, here is the result. 20 years later, 1973, the 3% who had, who had carried out and written out a comprehensive goal setting and goal task oriented game plan had accomplished more in terms of economic and material and business success than the other 97% combined. Coincidence? Are there some in that 3% that even without a goal would have maybe won, uh, not won big because they were super ambitious and whatever, sure. And some of the 87%, if you had given them or if you forced them to make a goal game plan, they maybe still wouldn't have succeeded to that level, sure. But I think that it's too, it's, it's too correlated that there can't be any 
correlation, if, if that makes any sense, right? There has to be something to that. And I can tell you this, you're never going to fail because you have a game plan. So, so in closing, what I, uh, what I want to tell you is just like you sit down with your clients and you figure out, hey, look, you, you want, you got, we've got backwards, right? You want to have this much money at retirement coming in per month. We've got this life expectancy, this age, Social Security is going to be this, taxes will be that. Now with inflation, you, instead of needing this amount, you need that amount. Now to get that amount coming in off of a collection of the world's great companies, you need to have this lump sum saved up, this financial independence number built up in this account to do all those things. Now to get that from where you are today, this many years before, you need to invest uh, this investment or this type of investment with this average defensible rate of return, track backtrack to today, you need to invest about this much lump sum with X amount per month coming in. If you invest this lump sum, or this, this much per month, in this particular type of investment with historically defensible returns, then you're probably going to have this lump sum and this lump sum with pulling out X amount of dollars will be the, inf the inflated equivalent of this taking into account inflation, taxes, and your longevity, right? We all done that a million times. It's pretty simple. I just did it word for word off the top of my head because I've done it a thousand times. Well, you need to do that for yourself in the business. It's just isn't that hard. If you want these goals, which is what this whole epiphany is all about, you figure out what the cash flow or cash is to get them. Right? At least on the personal goals, right? That might be that so not you don't need cash flow for the fam for your love of your family, or you don't need it for uh you know, being somebody um, or helping other people, but especially for the personal goals, you need to, it's, it's 90% of it's based on cash. Some of it's based on free time, but a lot of it's based on cash. Well, then you just got to figure out, backtrack. Okay, if I need this much coming in, this is my commission rate. So I need this much revenue. Well, to get this much revenue based on my numbers, my ratios, if not, you can pick just generic ratios that we have. I need to have this many clients. Well, to get this many clients, I need that many appointments. To get that many appointments, I need this many appointments set up. To get this many appointments set up, I need to have this many, uh, I need to make this many prospecting techniques uh, or a, a contacts, and then you need to do that. Now, here's the thing. What I just got done telling you today, epiphany number 35, goal set, um, um, the motivation, is what I call step zero. So this is what comes before that because the thing that's stopping you from prospecting, which is unlocking the key to your success in this business, everything flows from prospecting. But the thing that's stopping you, unless you're flat out completely just lazy, which I doubt because you never would have gotten this far if you weren't, is the psychology. And this is a big part of it right here, saying the goals. I'm telling you, it's, it's not easy, but daggum, it is really simple. So with that in mind, uh, please visit epiphany number 35, which is uh, on the knowledge base 5.35. And you can read a lot more than what I covered today. And set your goals. Go into the master spreadsheet. And there's a goal setting calculator right there.